Hey, we're Emily and Danny, and we've been traveling by van for four years from Alaska all the way down here to Chile with our cat Graham and our dog Sombrita. We are going to head to a BMX competition that Danny was invited to. Well, honestly, we got invited to the competition because of the van. I was in the parking lot of the skate park, and the founder of the skate park, as well as the guy who organized the competition, a really sick pro BMXer, Coco Zarita, also from Chile. He came up because he just thought the van was cool, I guess. So it was pretty funny he didn't even know I was a BMXer. He started off asking me, oh, are you gonna go surf the huge wave this week? Because he saw the surfboard on top of the van. He even asked if I was gonna go skate. I was like, no, man, I'm a BMXer. <laughs> I didn't know he was a BMXer either at the time. <laughs> Anyway, Coco Zarita is the nicest dude, invited us into the VIP, the competition sponsored by Monster. So they had all the Monster athletes over from Argentina, some other countries, and there was all the free Monster you could drink. For me, it was epic to see the Latin American BMX scene, how strong it is. Seriously, these guys are crazy. And it's been an epic road trip, hanging out with pro BMXers along the way. Costa Rica, met Kenneth Tencio, also one of the nicest dudes down in Honduras, was able to ride the private ramps of Mario Guerrero, and it's just been amazing. One of the Latin American BMXers actually got second this year in the first freestyle BMX competition at the Olympics, and the guy I met in Costa Rica got fourth. Emily's first BMX competition, and she's winning. <laughs> Since we were in the VIP, we got to go up on the vert ramp and meet this guy who was flying a drone around. He seemed to know when the best dude would go. It was pretty funny at the award ceremony because Coco asked him on the mic, hey, what about these Chilean empanadas? And he said, you got to go to Argentina to try what real empanadas are like. <laughs> Thanks, Coco Surita. You're the man. Danny's parents have come to visit us in Chile. We're excited to see new things in Chile and test out the van's transmission before completely leaving the city. So today we're heading to Valparaíso. When we were looking for things to do in Valparaiso, we stumbled upon a graffiti walking tour. So we'll be copying that. <laughs> Let's check out the amazing murals around here. We were super worried about heading to Valparaiso because iOverlander has so many accounts of tires being slashed at lights on foreign plated vehicles and people being robbed. But it's a beautiful city and we're sure glad we took the risk. So a really cool part about Valparaiso is that it's a huge hill with a bunch of small valleys in between. They have funiculas or cable cars going up and down the hills so that people can get around easier. And it's so much easier than buses trying to make their way up these huge switchbacks. Scared of heights, huh, Mom? Valparaiso is the nearest coastal town to Santiago. Let's go check out the beach. It's called Viña del Mar. Mm -hmm. 
After Viña del Mar, the next spot heading north is the Concon Dunes. These dunes are a great spot to bust out our sandboard. We've been carrying this thing since the Oregon coast. I don't know who's more excited about these dunes, Sabrita or us. Honestly, the dunes were pretty wet, but we had a good time anyways on the sandboard. Danny found a super different restaurant with a tasting menu based on flavors that are native to Chile. Solo un rayo del sol cambia el tiempo en el reloj. Hoy mis deudas reciben perdón. So I really love wine, and one of my one of the things that I was excited to do in Chile was check out the wineries. And you guys probably know this one; it's definitely on the shelves in your local liquor store, Concha y Toro. We're gonna go on a tour in Concha y Toro. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so fun. Usually you'd be able to taste all of the grapes that they make into wine, and this is the area that we'd be able to do that, but this is the wrong time. Oh well. They have every different kind of varietal grape here. They teach you on the tour how to do a wine tasting. First, you look at the legs or how the wine drips down the side of the glass. Smelling the wine is the next step. And maybe my favorite step is tasting the wine. After visiting the inside cellar, they take you down into the Casillero del Diablo, which you've probably seen on the bottles of wine. It was really fun down there. They actually shut off the lights and had a projection going and a little story about how some guy stole wine and since it's the devil's place, they died. So don't steal wine from these guys. sitting in that apartment I just kept on thinking of all the things that I wanted to do here in Santiago and one of the places that I found that I was like well we have to go and check this out is Cajon del Maipo and today we're gonna make our way into the canyon with some Rita and Graham we're all going together and it's just a couple hours outside of the city since the van would be kind of cramped for four my parents rented a little cabin and we slept in the van outside it was an awesome spot because the animals could roam free. We took Graham and Sombrita on a walk and my dad really loves Graham. So it was epic to get to enjoy that together. I should say that Graham also really loves my dad. Good morning from Gahonda Maipo. 
in this awesome part of Chile, there's a couple of valleys you can head up. And one of them has a dam called Embalse de Yeso. Surrounding the dam, there are amazing mountains just poking up all over the sides. I won't give too much away, but I'm super excited to go on a nice long hike today with some Rita and Danny's parents. So we're up here just an hour and a half away from Santiago in the Cajon del Maipo. And we're doing the famous Embalse del Yeso hike here. I forgot my sunglasses. Looking <laughs> up, oh, it's rough. You can't, you might go blind. The reason why it, it's so snowy when we're not that far south is all the way up at 8,200 feet. And we're really enjoying the snow here. And in Sokan right now, where Danny's parents are going back to tomorrow, it's a hundred degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and look at all of us wearing ski clothes. Yeah. Sombrita is enjoying it the most, I think. <laughs> Running in and out and jumping deep into the snow. It was cute because the other day she was at the beach doing the same thing in the sand. So this is just some wet ice sand. <laughs> That bit of the trail was super sketchy, but I think it's about to pay off. A lot of locals had recommended this hike to us. In the summer, this would actually be a really sketchy road that we probably wouldn't want to drive our van on. An hour farther down, there's also a hot spring that's really secluded. Oh my God, we are witnessing an epic adventure across here. Check it out. So there you can see the trail, the heads up, and then switch back and up there, cut over, switch back and up there, cutting over. And now there's just two dots there next to that avalanche debris. And if they're going to put on some skis and head down that, oh, what are they trying to do? Climb to the top? Practice for Everest? Pretty gnarly. Lunch on the road back. Tuna fish for PBJs. Thanks so much for coming along with us. If you like this video, make sure to share and subscribe. And if you want to support us a little bit more, head over to our Patreon. We'll see you guys next time.